The American newspaper comic strip came into being in the year 1896, at a time when newspapers were the main source of information for people, and competition between various newspapers was often very intense. In fact, it was often the comic strips that a particular newspaper carried that convinced people to buy that paper rather than one of its competitors. Interestingly, the comic strip was around for over a quarter century before anyone tried to tell an adventure story within that format. Until then, most strips were humor-oriented. That changed, though, in 1924. And the artist who changed this was named Roy Crane. Roy was born in Texas in 1901, and as a teenager, he actually rode the rails for a time as a hobo, and later he shipped out as a sailor on a tramp steamer. These were experiences that would later serve him well as a storyteller. At the age of 19, he attended the Academy of Fine Arts in Chicago. And then he worked at, for the newspaper The New York World for a couple of years in their art department. In 1924, he decided to try his hand at creating a comic strip. Now, by 1924, comic strips were marketed through syndicates. A syndicate would take ownership of a strip, pay the, the, art, pay the artist a regular salary to create it, and then market it to newspapers throughout the country. The syndicate that Roy Crane worked for was the NEA, the Newspaper Enterprise Association. And the strip he created for the NEA was called Washington Tubbs II. And at first, it was a humor strip, not much different from other strips being produced at that time. The main character was a short, dumpy guy named Wash Tubbs, who worked as a clerk in a small town store and fancied himself a ladies' man. Like other humor strips, each day's offering would be two or three panels that set up the gag or the punchline in the last panel. But Crane was soon bored with this, and he disliked having to come up with so many gags. So, in August of 1924, he introduced an element of mystery and adventure to this, into the strip when he sent Wash Tubbs to the South Seas on a treasure hunt. Now Wash was encountering villains and other dangers. Strips didn't end in a gag every day anymore but instead ended in a cliffhanger that continued the story on into the next day. Now, though the strip never lost its sense of humor, this change in format was both artistically successful and popular with readers. So Crane still had, soon had wash tubs bumming around the world, sometimes alone and sometimes with a friend, getting into dangerous situations wherever he went. In 1927, Crane introduced the character of Bull Dawson, a villain who would appear on a reoccurring basis for years to come. With Dawson's arrival came an even more intense sense of danger and adventure. There were gun battles, there were fist fights, and there were knife fights that would often run for two weeks worth of, of daily strips before being resolved. People got hurt, and often people got killed, and there no longer seemed a guarantee that poor wash tubs would survive. The little guy that once got lost in the desert without water he got involved in battles with bandits and pirates, or he got involved in civil wars in remote countries. Though, as mentioned earlier, the strip always had elements of humor in it. It was now beyond question, primarily an adventure strip. In 1929, Crane introduced another important character, someone who would become a co-star of the strip along with wash tubs, and would, would allow the strip to enter an era in which Crane would be at the top of his game in telling vibrant and exciting stories. And that's something we'll cover in part two of this series.